Here's a quick video on how to solve a couple different types of exponential equations. So first of all, what is an exponential equation? Why, why is this equation an exponential equation? Well, it's because the variable, the unknown, is in the exponent, right? It's up here in the exponent. So I'm going to go through a, a couple different types of exponential equations. The first one is going to be an easy one to solve. The second one is going to be a little more difficult. So what makes this exponential equation a little easier to solve is that I have a power equals a power. And these powers, I could rewrite them with the same base. right? So this is a power of 3. This is a power of 9. But I could easily rewrite 9 as a power of base 3. right? 9 is 3 squared. So I could rewrite this as 3 squared to the x minus 1. Well, what's the purpose of doing this? Why rewrite, rewrite them with the same power? Well, think about it. Let's say we had x to the a equals x to the b, right? If I have two powers equal to each other that have the same base, x, x, well, the only way this equation could be true is if the exponents a and b were the same thing, if a and b were equal to each other. So if I can rewrite these powers with the same base, right, both base 3, well, now I know that the exponents have to be equal for this equation to be true. Oh, I forgot to write the x plus 1 up here. OK, so let's go ahead and now we can set the exponents equal to each other. Oh, before I do that, I might want to use my power of a power rule here uh, to simplify. So I know that if I have an exponent on top of an exponent, I can rewrite it with those exponents multiplied together. So 2 times x minus 1. Don't forget to distribute the 2 to the x and the negative 1, making it 2x minus 2. So now this, what I have right here, looks exactly like here. It's power equals power where the bases are the same. So the only way this can be true, the only way this side of the equation could be the same as this side of the equation, since the bases are already the same, would be if the exponents were also the same thing. So set the exponents equal and now solve for what value of x makes that true. So we now just have a linear equation to solve. So rearrange, uh, I would bring all the x's to the left and all the constant terms to the right. So 1 plus 2 equals 2x minus x. And I figure out x is 3. So that equation is solved. You could check it back in your original equation. If I plugged 3 into the original, I would have 3 to the 4, um, which is 81. Is that equal to 9 to the 2? Yes, 9 to the 2 is also 81. So left side is right side. OK, let's do a more complicated one. Why is this one more complicated? Well, we can't do what we did for the last one. I can't rewrite 3 as a base 2 power, or not easily anyway. So when that happens, when, it, when you can't actually rewrite the powers to have the same base, what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to start using our log rules. We're going to want to take the log of both sides of the equation. So log of 2 to the x equals log of 3 to the x minus 1. Right, as long as we do the same thing to both sides of the equation, we can do whatever we want. So this equation is still true. It's still balanced. And now we'll use the power rule. The power rule tells us we're allowed to take the exponent of the argument and write it as the coefficient of the log. So I have x log 2 equals x minus 1 log 3. And if you don't know these rules, go back and watch my previous video first. OK, so now what I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to distribute my log 3 to the x and the negative 1. So I'm going to have x log 3 minus 1 log 3 when I do my distributing. So x log 2 equals x log 3 minus 1 log 3. So I now have two terms that have a variable. I have an x log 2 and an x log 3. Whenever you have multiple variable terms, you want to bring them to the same side of the equation. So I'm going to bring them to the left side of the equation. So I'll leave the x log 2 and bring over the x log 3 by subtracting it. So minus x log 3 equals negative log 3. Now what I'm going to want to do is I want to isolate x, right? I want to know what x is equal to, what value of x makes the equation true. So both of the terms have an x. I want to isolate x. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to common factor out an x from both terms. So put an x out front, then divide both terms by the x I took out. And I get log 2 minus log 3. I'll change this one to a square bracket so you can more easily see what I have here. Equals negative log 3. And now we're almost done. x is almost by itself. Just divide both sides uh, by this number here, by whatever log 2 minus log 3 is. So divide the log 2 minus log 3 to the other side. 
and we get negative log 3 divided by log 2 minus log 3. And then we would just evaluate that if we wanted an approximate answer. But if we wanted an exact answer, well, that is the exact answer. If we wanted an approximate answer, we could type that in. So I'll get my calculator here. And we would want to type negative log 3, negative log 3. And I want to divide that by log 2 minus log 3, which I could just write as log 2 divided by 3, but I'll write log 2 minus log 3. And my approximate answer is going to be 2.71 to two decimal places, about 2.71. All right, so that's two versions of exponential equations, one where we can rewrite them with the same base and one where we couldn't easily. So we had to take log of both sides and use our power rule. If you want to watch my next video, I'm going to go over how to solve an exponential equation that's in quadratic form. So I'll do that in my next video. So go to jensenmath.ca to get all the corresponding material and make sure you subscribe.